We've been covering the great tree of life and talking about the main groups of taxa that or taxa that exist in the tree of life. And we already talked about the, the unicellular cells as well as some of the early eukaryotic cells called protists. And then we talked about fungus and plants, which are kind of vegetative organisms. Although, and remember that animals are actually closer to fungus than they are to plants. Plants have chloroplasts and cell walls made of cellulose, while fungus have cell walls made of chitin, which is a material that's also only found in animals. And the DNA of fungus is similar to the DNA of animals, more so than it is to the DNA of plants. Now, the last taxonomy group that we want to discuss is going to be the animal group. Now, all animals are multicellular organisms which have very complex cells which are highly specialized, kind of like the plants, but they took it to a whole new level and all of them are going to be ingest, uh, ingestive heterotrophs. So they're heterotrophs like the fungus, in other words, they must consume food to survive, and most of them feed on plants, animals, or fungus, some even on smaller things like protists, but they are ingestive in the sense that they must swallow their food and digest inside their bodies rather than outside the way the funguses do it. Animals are very, very cool, and we're going to learn about a lot about them throughout in the future still. But, uh, and we're going to do this whole thing in more and more detail when we talk about animal diversity, and then we're going to go to each animal group in more detail. But I just want to do a quick overview about the main parts of this kingdom. So, first of all, let's talk about some things you're going to need to know before you can understand how the animals split in the tree of life. Of course, you have the levels of organization. What will be here, right? So you have the atom and then a molecule or compound which forms macromolecules which then form organelles which then form cells. Now cells of the same type or the same function in organisms which are bigger than unicellular organisms are called tissue. And then we put different kinds of tissue together you can make organs which then organize themselves into organ systems and then finally into the organism. This is important because not all animals will have tissue, but uh, animals are really the first ones that have specialized, high-level specialization in tissues and organs. Uh, you could say plants have organs and tissue as well, but not all animals will be like that. So that you need to know the idea or the concept of a tissue. Uh, another thing you have to remember is the idea of embryonic development. We talked a little bit about this when we did um, human sexual reproduction. And remember that from that first fertilized zygotic cell, they will split through a process called cleavage in which will form first an eight cell stage and then the way you look at this eight cell stage is going to determine a lot about later on and we'll talk about that in a second but more cleavage will lead to the formation of a blob of cells which we call morula it's missing from this drawing here but when this morula actually organizes itself into a hollow ball that actually has a hole in the model called the blastrocoel we call that a blastula now, then this blaster will fold inwards, kind of like that. You know, we have the hollow ball and it'll fold inwards to form something we call a gastrula. The gastrula will have an opening that's called a blastopore, and, a, and then in the inside of that, it will have uh, something called the enterocaron. And in between the two layers which will form, you form something that's called a blastocoel, all right? And the simplest types of animals that do this will have at least two layers of tissues, the ectoderm and the endoderm, like you see in this picture. Ectoderm is now what they, we call the outside, and the endoderm is what we call the inside. And this is a process that's called gastrulation that's going to lead to the formation of this gastrula. All right? Now, in some organisms, this will happen in a more advanced way, where a new layer of or tissue of cells will actually develop in between the endoderm and the ectoderm within the blastocoel. That's what we call the mesenchyme or the mesoderm. And that's actually going to develop into the middle layers of tissue. Now, that hole, that opening in the middle, that which we call the archenteron, is going to become the gastral cavity of the animal. And so we, that's going to be important, all right? And that blastopore is going to become either the mouth or the anus of the animal. So that's a, very interesting in how that actually the process actually develops. Now, the tissue layers are going to come from this. So the way the embryo de development happens, it will determine the types of cells which come from each of those layers. Now, the internal layers will form things like lung cells, thyroid cells, pancreatic cells, the organs on the inside, all the way on the inside of your body. The mesoderm cells will, things will form things like muscle, like uh, cells of the kidney, uh, red, red blood cells, smooth muscle cells, and things like that. And then the ectoderm will form things like the skin or the neuron cells and things like that. And that's the external layer. So that's why that's important. Another thing that's important and that's going to also depend on the way that the embryonic development took place is that some animal groups will have cavities on the inside while others will not. And others will have things we call pseudo-cavities. 
All right, so let's see how that actually looks like. Now, some animals will not have cavities. They only have that comes from the blastropore or the or, or when the when the blastula invaginates or folds inwards to form the gastrula. That gastrulation will actually create the gastro cavity. In some animals, the gastro cavity goes all the way and forms a mouth. In others, it doesn't really form a mouth. They have a one-way mouth anus kind of thing. But some actually have a cavity that extends throughout the entire body. And, but notice that they don't have any cavities other than that cavity. That's the only cavity that they have. So they have the layers, the three layers. They have the, you see there, the ectoderm on the outside. And you have the endoderm on the inside. And you have the cavity inside of that. And you have the mesoderm, but there's no cavities within the mesoderm. And that's what makes them called acoamylates. So here the word here in the bottom, no coamylate, or coal means hole. They don't have that internal hole except for the gut cavity. Another group will have a fake hole is what we call it. They're called pseudocoamylates. They have the digestive tract, which is surrounded by the endoderm, you know, and they have the gut like the other ones had. And they have the ectoderm and the mesoderm, but you see there's a cavity between the endoderm uh, and the mesoderm. And that's why we call them pseudocoamylates. They have a cavity between the internal layers and the actual um, um, intestinal tract. So those are pseudocoamylates. True coamylates, though, have the three layers, and they have cavities within the mesoderm, not between the mesoderm and the endoderm. So those are things like us, which have cavities, like, you know, we have the thoracic cavity, the uh, gut cavity, you have the... the uh, brain cavity or cephalic cavity. We have cavities within the mesoderm. So the layers of cells in the mesoderm will have layers, cavities inside of them. Look at the lungs. This is a perfect example of what we're talking about. Lungs is in a cavity in itself and there's cavities inside the lungs. So it's a lot more complex than the other types of organisms. So this is what we call body plans of the animals. And remember, this has have everything to do with the tissue layers that we just discussed. So you're going to have either uh, no tissue, or you're going to have two layers of tissue, where you have endoderm or ectoderm, or you have three layers of tissue, like the ones we've been discussing right now. So you have to think about the tissue layers, the embryonic development, and already the body plan, which is the types of cavities that you have. You also have to think about in terms of symmetry. Some animals are going to be asymmetrical. They have no symmetry whatsoever, like sponges. Others will have radial symmetry. You look at them, and you cut them in, all, in angles, and every time you look, it will be about the same, kind of like you see here in the bottom. And you have bilateral symmetry, which are animals you can cut in half, and each half will pretty much be the same as the other half. So symmetry is another important thing. Another important thing is going to be the idea of cephalation, or the concentration of nervous impulses and, organ and systems in one end of the body. Look how, this, for example, this organism here will actually have eye spots and a brain in the front of its body. That's called cephalation. But notice that the nadarians and the kinoderms do not have that's that. They don't have a region of their body that actually forms a brain kind of thing. But other organisms will actually have a concentration of nerves in a certain area of their body, and we call that the brain or cephalation, which gives them an advantage because they now can see where they uh, have the majority of their senses in the direction in which they're heading. And that's why the cephalation evolved, all right? Uh, you also have the idea of the way that the embryon splits. Now, in the beginning, they all look the same. You see how there's absolutely no difference between the first uh, stages of the of cleavage. But by the time you get to the eight cell stage, you see start seeing a difference in the way the cells are splitting. There are two types of split. Deuterosomes are animals that split evenly throughout. You see that even all the way through 32 cell stage uh, and beyond, they will split uh, with radial symmetry. Okay? Now, they may not become radial symmetrically by the time they become the full organism, but these deuterosomes actually split evenly as they start to split. And that's why they're going to become different kinds of animals there, right? And you see that the, in the moral stage, you get even distributions of cells. Now, on the protosomes, you're going to have radi uh, spiral cleavage, which means that the cells will split more towards one end than to the other, and you form a 32-cell stage that looks like that instead of like that. So you have spiral symmetry, or in other words, you have this arching uh, cell division process instead of the deuterosome kind of process. Now because of that, when you get to the gastrula stage, things are going to be different. Notice that depending on which your cell stage were, uh, were like, you're going to end up different. Now, if, you're, if your eight cell stage showed radial symmetry, when you form that blastrocoel, all right, and the enterocaron from that blastrulation event, that hole, the blastro hole, is going to become the anus of the animal. And then it will extend all the way back to form the mouth. 
All right, so the blastropore becomes the anus in, in all the animals which are durosomes, which are have the radio eight cell stage. But with animals with a uh, spiral uh, uh, eight cell stage, the uh, that interchiron will become a gastro cavity, just the same. But because of the ways that they fold, they look at how they fold completely different. You know, the, the mesoderm is formed down here instead of forming up there. And because of that, their mouth is going to be the blastropore, and the anus is what develops last, all right? Because the mesoderm is going to become the, the parts on the bottom here rather than parts on the top. So that's going to help determine if you are anus first or mouth first kind of organism. And that's going to be important later when we talk about the animal diversity, so pay attention to that, okay? Finally, we have the idea of segmentation or appendages. A lot of animals will have appendages in their body. They have the central body, but they will also have extensions to that central body, like you see here with these arthropods, or with us, with our arms and legs. Also, some animals are segmented. They will have segments. For example, we have a head, a thorax, the abdominal parts of our body. And so that is the same thing that happens here. You see with the, the earthworm, which is segmented in a lot of different parts. And the same thing is true for that arthropod here. You will have a cephalothorax, which is the head and the thorax, and then an abdominal region as well. So you see that uh, this segmentation will lead to more variation in the animal and more advancement as well. So that's also important and when we talk about the different kinds of, of animals. And so now we're ready to start talking about the animal groups. And I'll talk about that on the next video when I'm going to do a quick overview about the animal groups. And then we'll revisit all of these concepts and talk about them in more detail when we actually do animal diversity lecture series. And I'll see you guys in the next video.